Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Daniel Galvan, and I am the Director for Student Engagement in the College of Engineering, Computer Science, and Technology. And we are happy that you have decided to join us on this lovely Saturday morning to learn more about the different clubs and organizations that you can join uh, within the College of Engineering, Computer Science, and Technology. A uh, friendly reminder for those of you who um, didn't get a chance to join us uh, either on Wednesday or Friday. Our recordings for preview dates um, will be available on our website and also the admissions website so you can get a full overview of the college and what we have to offer. And then also a friendly reminder, if we do uh, hear our students say ECST, they are referring to the College of Engineering, and Computer Science and Technology. That's just an acronym that we use uh, within the college. So just wanted to share that with you all. Um, so I want to give you all a quick overview, let you know that this uh, presentation is being recorded. If you have any questions at any point for any of our student leaders, you can feel free to uh, drop them in the Q&A that's located at the bottom of your screen. Uh, some of our clubs do have multiple uh, representatives joining us this morning. So while one club member is presenting, the other one can answer questions, or once they're done presenting, they can answer any questions you might have specific to their clubs or organizations. There is live transcription available. So if you would like to have that option, you just click on the closed captioning button at the bottom of your screen and you can have that. And um, yeah, we'll go from there. So quick overview of what to expect today. So um, again, uh, my name is Daniel Galvan and I'm the Director for Student Engagement. And today we'll have about a 10 minute presentation from the clubs listed here. So we're gonna be joined by the Society of Women Engineers, RoboSub, Society of Hispanic Professional Engineers, uh, Association for Computer Computing Engineering, National Society of Black Engineers, Formula SAE, and American Society of Mechanical Engineers, ASME. So it is my great pleasure to introduce to you all uh, the Society of Women Engineers. And joining us this morning to present is Kat uh, Bonobo and Eileen Sanchez. So Kat or Eileen, I'll stop sharing now so that you can share your screen. Thank you. Um, welcome, everyone. I'm just going to share our presentation. Um, can everybody see? It's loading. Okay. It's just a white screen right now. Yeah, sorry about that. Um, it should take a second. There we go. All right, uh, I apologize. We'll probably just do it like this so no one gets lost on it. Okay, um, so we're the Society of Women Engineers. And you know, what is sweet? Um, so we're the world's largest advocate and catalyst for change for women in engineering and technology. Um, and we're a national organization as well as we have our own chapter at Cal State LA. So to ensure that we members reach their full potential as engineers and leaders, we offer a lot of opportunities. Um, this includes networking, providing professional development and you know, shaping public policy. Um, and most of all, we value diversity. So um, this is just our officers from this year. And you know, why should you join? Uh, getting an engineer degree can be isolating. It can definitely be hard. Um, but the most important part is about SWE is that you're not alone. And SWE gives us a you know, automatic network of peers with similar experiences, challenges, and goals to work together and kind of to work through our problems as well. You know, many of current SWE members credit joining SWE in college as the reason they stuck and succeeded in their STEM programs. And you know, your community is critical to your engineering and education as well as your career. And we have a lot of different opportunities that kind of help you succeed in that department. And as a member, um, club members become sweesters and are there to help you along your engineering journey, no matter where in the world you may be. We're ultimately a community and we have a huge mentorship program that kind of um, adds to that and helps us sustain this that we'll kind of go into. So networking, we had a lot of events and plans in fall 2020 that 
kind of go into our networking guest speakers um we had tons of guest speakers throughout the time even though we're virtual we had zoom opportunities to listen to these guest speakers and tune into industry professionals tech recruiters and cal state la alumni as they discuss their experiences plus tips and tricks for students in stem um, we had an industry night just a few nights ago that kind of had that similar experience we have a mentorship program which for me i was a freshman joining this year and was super helpful um, a year-long program that connects cal state la students together within the same major and or same interest to share and expand the professional and academic knowledge. So you get a whole community of people, but you have that one mentor or you can mentor somebody else that kind of will help you stick through, um, you know, and get that professional and academic knowledge. Um, we also had a lot of outreach events. We're constantly like pulling out a whole bunch of events. If you follow our Instagram, you'll see there's constantly new things you can join frequent outreach events you can also attend general members and speak on behalf of SWE we had like some fun like cooking nights and coding nights and stuff like that um, and something that's really cool about SWE that not a lot of other clubs offer is our conference um, it's completely virtual this year um, but we still had the chance to fund a whole bunch of our members uh, to go to the conference which um, kind of prepares you to get ready um, for like the real world you get a lot of networking out of it and a lot of really cool um, seminars and also we're working with a lot of collaborations with other clubs and programs on and off campus. And we're also uh, hoping to work with some high schools um, this semester as well. Uh, Eileen, do you wanna go into professional development? Thank you, Kat. Um, good morning, everyone. My name is Eileen. I'll be talking about professional development and I'm finishing off this presentation. So as, my, as Catherine said, we we focus a lot on professional development so as you can see we this um semester even though it was virtual we were able to host resume workshops which obviously helps anybody even if you think you your resumes might be ready you never know if you if someone mentions a tip and it'll help you get an internship we have local and national conferences this year we were able to send 86 of our members and you don't always have to be a member. We were able to send other people from Cal State LA to our conferences. We have we host mock interviews, which obviously help as well. We have we host panels. This year we were able to bring LEDWP to speak to our students. And something that we would like to highlight a lot is our mentorship program. Catherine talked about this, but um in our in our mentorship program, we like to pair. Um, incoming freshmen or transfer students with a senior or a junior and we like for them to bond not only not only make a friendship but also help each other develop and develop um develop develop <laughs> um well you know, professional development, establishing goals, and just giving them, giving each other advice on the classes that they should be taking and how they should be involved on campus. Okay, next slide. So how to become a member. So Castell Lay Suite membership is free. You don't have to, um, it, there's no fee. There's, you just join at the end of this presentation, I'll be sending a link. So if you guys are interested, you could sign up. If you do want to become a national member, there is a fee, but of course it's not, you're not, you're not obligated to pay that fee. On screen, there's um, two types of memberships. So it's the C2C career, which is $50, and the annual membership, which is $20. Of course, they're not, you're not obligated to pay to become a national member. But if you do want to be a board member sometime along, sometime in your college career, then yeah, those are options. So some of our, um, these are some of our members that I have graduated now and they we've been able to help them get internships and jobs. And these are the friends that you make at SWE are lifelong friends and you guys are able to just always connect and come back. And these are some of the, these are some of our members that were able to attend our conferences. Like I said, some of our members are able to get internships with Raytheon, Boeing, John Deere, and a lot more.
So if you guys want to contact us, um, on screen is our is our Instagram, our Facebook, and our website. Um, our Twitter is the same as our web as our Instagram handle. And I will be so in the chat is our Google form if you guys are interested in joining us. Does anybody have any questions? Thank you, Kat and Eileen. Um, one of the questions that um, I know your organization often gets is, do you need to be a woman to join SWE? Um, so you do not need to be a woman. It's about fostering a community and you know, fostering a community that promotes women. Uh, you don't need to you know, define yourself as a woman uh, necessarily. Uh, so it's just about being a community. So if you are a male or don't um, want to, conform to a she or he, you are welcome to join. Awesome. And again, a reminder for all of our participants, um, if you do have any questions for any of our panelists, feel free to drop them in the Q&A and um, they can answer them. Um, I don't see any questions particular or specifically for Sweet at this time, but maybe if uh, Kat and Eileen, if you wouldn't mind hanging out for another five minutes or so, if questions do pop up that you can answer them in the Q&A. Yeah, absolutely. All right, well, thank you very much. And one thing that I do wanna emphasize about SWE and other um, professional organizations that you're gonna be hearing about today is something that SWE just highlighted right now was the importance of attending uh, professional conferences. And specifically these professional conferences that you get an opportunity to attend, there's companies out there recruiting you directly and giving you an internship on site or right there and then, or um, a job offer. And we're talking big companies like Google, Facebook, uh, McCarthy Construction, um, all, all sorts of companies that you are, might be your dream companies that you wanna work for after your education within the College of Engineering, Computer Science and Technology. So these um, student clubs and organizations within our college are great opportunities to give you that leg up and prepare you as, a, as the presenters just shared um, to make sure that your resume is top notch and ready for, for that um, potential employer. So again, thank you very much, Kat and Eileen, and hopefully you can stick around and answer any questions that might come up. All right, up next, uh, we have Aaron Petro uh, Petrosian, uh, who will be uh, presenting on RoboSub. Aaron, you can go ahead and share your screen. Yep, all right, thank you. Uh, when I find it real quick, should be this. Okay. So this presentation is a little bit longer, so I'll try to go through it quickly. Um, if anybody has any questions on something that I skip over, just please feel free to write it in the chatter. Um, or if you're able to talk, I'm not sure if you are, then feel free to speak up as well. Um, but yeah, just to get started, we are AUV Cal State LA. Um, uh, for short, we just like to call ourselves RoboSub. And what we do is we build autonomous underwater vehicles, AUVs. And these are four of the submarines that we have worked on so far. And the way that our club works is that it's actually a multidisciplinary club. And what that means is that we have mechanicals, electricals, and computer science students all working together to, to build one robot. And uh, just to get into things, my name is Arne Petrosian. I'm the current vice president of the club. And sadly, I don't think any of the other officers could have made it today because Robo Nation is currently hosting an informational session at the same exact time. But um, I'll be going over all the fun, all the fun information. I'm a cat honorary officer, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, just to go into what the competition is about and how our club kind of works. Every year, um, Robo Nation hosts a competition at this facility. This is uh, one of the Navy's testing facilities in San Diego. And it's an international competition. So teams from all around the world will come and we'll all compete in this pool with our submarines. And kind of the way the competition works is that 
there they lay out a bunch of obstacles and tasks underwater and our robots have to be completely autonomous once they go underwater then they have to go through these tasks and complete them depending on what they are uh, so they have things like this which is a gate that you have to go through there might be a path that you have to follow um, here there's like buoys that you might have to bump into depending on what the picture on the buoy is there's like a vampire you could shoot a torpedo through and stuff you have to pick up and plenty of other things that you have to do and as you complete the task you get points and obviously the team with the highest points uh, wins the competition but uh, just to skip ahead here so as i mentioned before we have different engineering disciplines all working on the same project so um, you don't have to be like a mechanical engineer to work on the mechanical aspect of it you could be an art major as long as you're interested just work on work on whatever team you you feel like you could contribute the most to or learn the most from but i'll go through it based on majors um, so starting off we have the mechanical uh the mechanical group i guess the way this is kind of split up is we have the frame and hull team so they're in charge of designing the frame and the hull of the robot and really they, this team is very solidworks heavy solidworks is just like a um an application that you can use to design components online and they design the entire robot and make sure that it's completely waterproof and that it's not going to break and they go through using laser cutting, water jetting, any machining that needs to be done like welding or, or using drill presses or anything like that, this team will be doing that. And then we also have the other aspect of the mechanical team, that's the, um, that's the actuated systems team. So they're in charge of building a torpedo, a claw and a ball dropper. Because at certain points in the competition, these three um, these three weapons will be used. Like a torpedo will be needed to shoot um, to shoot the torpedo like through a hole. You'll be needing to pick something up. Sorry about that. Um, and then you usually need to drop a ball into some sort of bin. One thing I forgot to mention earlier was that every year the the tasks for the competition change. Um, but the theme is basically the theme changes. So like that year was a vampire theme. You have to interact with vampires, onions, crucifixes, coffins, things like that. And then another year it might be, um, uh, I think it was a gambling theme and like a casino kind of theme. Um, but the general tasks usually stay the same. And, um, yeah, I think just to save time, I'll skip ahead from here. The next uh, major that we have is the electrical team. And about 95% of like the electrical aspect of the club goes to power distribution. And what power distribution basically is, is just taking the battery that we have and powering all of the electronics on the robot. So we have sensors, we have thrusters, we have our motherboard, our microprocessors, a bunch of different electronics. And this team is in charge of making sure everything gets powered with the voltage and the current that it needs. And then um, the way we do that is by designing these PCBs, like, uh, like the one in the top right. That's one of the ones that we've designed um, here at Calstead LA. And then um, another thing to mention is that our battery obviously needs to be inside of the sub so that it doesn't get wet. But we also have things on the outside like thrusters and sonars and hydrophones and stuff like that. And so another thing that this team kind of has to worry about is how we get the power from the inside of the submarine to the outside. And that's done um, through these pins here. And it can be done in other ways as well. So that's something that this team kind of considers. And then um, one thing to mention is that a small aspect of this team also is data acquisition. What that basically means is just getting data off of sensors. So we have some complicated sensors like the sonar and the hydrophone that give you really fuzzy data. And this team kind of combines a little bit electrical and a little bit of the computer science aspect. Um, but this is also one of the higher level projects. So we don't really worry about that on the club side of stuff. And um, I think I was just gonna mention that uh, what we use to create these PCB boards is Eagle Cat and LT Spice. I think they teach LT Spice in some of the electrical classes. I'm not 100% sure on that though. And whenever things do finally get online or um, 
not online in person we'll be doing a lot of soldering and a lot of wiring so you'll get a lot of hands-on experience with that um but yeah i think that's all i was going to mention there so finally the last team that we have is the computer science team um so this is kind of split up into three different sub teams the first one is the um Kind of the team that really focuses on hard programming that's the that's the what we call the state machine team and they're in charge of thinking about what might happen what could come up if this happens what should we do if that happens what should we do they're kind of like the brain of the robot and one thing that they use is this thing called ross robot operating system and in case anybody's wondering you um it's compatible with ubuntu which is a version of linux and what ROS uh, enables us to do, basically, it lets us um, write multiple different codes. So we can have like one code controlling the robot, one code checking the cameras to see what data um, or what objects that we see. You have another code that's um, controlling the weapons, and then you have like another code that's the brain of the robot. And what ROS lets you do is lets all these codes talk to each other very easily. So it's very useful for us. Um, so that's one thing I was gonna mention there. Another thing is that almost all of our programming is done with Python and Arduino, but um, there is we could use C++ if we wanted to. It's just, we prefer using the simpler methods, <laughs> but if we wanna make things complicated or if we would need to for some reason, we can use Python or we can use C++ or other um, languages as well. But uh, let's see, what else was I going to mention? Oh, one thing to mention was in the top right here, you can see like this is an image of something at competition. So something the robot might see at competition. So it notices that it, there's four dice. It notices the roulette table down all the way over here. And these objects change every single year. So our computer vision team spends a lot of time gathering data, gathering photos and retraining the neural network for for the new objects that we have to detect and that's done through machine learning in case anybody's interested um i think i was really quickly going to mention as well that um the way this team is kind of organized is through github so if somebody doesn't know github is this online website that lets you um, that lets multiple people upload code and you can see what code somebody else uploaded and you can write a comment on it, or you can tell them like what they might've made a mistake on, or, or if somebody else sees your code and they think that it's perfect and it's correct, they can approve it and it gets pushed to like this finished code folder basically. And um, yeah, so it really gives you a lot of, in a sense, hands-on experience and quotation marks, um, but it lets you work with a team really well. I'm not sure if I'm running very low on time, but I'll go through this really quickly. I was just going to mention um, benefits of joining is very self-explanatory, pretty obvious. It's a strong experience. Sorry, I got a freeway outside mass. <laughs> it's a strong experience for your resume, obviously. It's a year-long project, so you don't have to put in time every single day for the entire year. But anytime you don't have homework, you have some free time, and you want to learn something, or apply something that you learned. It's it's a great project to just quickly put in some extra time and uh, and work on it. And I think the only other thing I was going to mention was that um, we have a bunch of people that are very experienced with the club, and then a bunch of people that are just joining in and they know nothing. It's perfectly fine if you know nothing, because all the experienced people will hopefully pass on all the information they know, and then you guys will be. The ones that know everything and those guys will leave and you guys will be the ones that um that teach the next people but yeah i think that was everything i was going to mention i'm sorry if i went a little over time there thank you aaron for uh sharing that information and it's very important to highlight the, the last point that aaron just shared in that um to join a uh, robo sub or any of these um clubs and activities you don't need to wait until your junior or senior year uh, to join. Um, there, this really is a team environment and, and the teammates, the older teammates will 
mentor you and guide you through uh, the learning process of how to do this. And, and this is a great uh, example of interdisciplinary work that we uh, train you and help you get experience and exposure to in ECST early on as once you graduate from our our majors in our college, you will be working in interdisciplinary teams um, in the real world. So again, perfect example of a way to get involved in exposure early on. Um, so at this time, I don't see any questions aren't specifically for RoboSub, but if you wanna stick around for another couple of five minutes or so, um, if anyone has any questions, feel free to drop them in the Q&A and Aaron uh, can type an answer for you. Thank you, Aaron. And I'll post the uh, sign up link in case anybody's very interested. Sounds um, good. Yeah, thank you. All right, so thank you very much. Up next, we have um, Aaron Lockett uh, from the Society of Hispanic Professional Engineers, also known as SHIP or in our in or CHESS, um, who will be sharing more um, about his uh, organization. Aaron, you can go ahead and share your screen. Thank you, Dr. Galvan, for that intro. I'll go ahead and share my screen right now. So go ahead and let me know, can everyone see my screen? Yes. Awesome. Um, and if at any moment I start to lag or cut out with the audio, just let me know and I can turn off my video. So that might work a little bit better. But thank you everyone for joining today. Um, my name is Aaron Lockett. I am currently the co-president for what is known as the Society of Hispanic Engineering and Science Students, acronymed as CHESS. Um, otherwise, we're also known as SHIP Cal State LA, which SHIP stands for the Society of Hispanic Professional Engineers. And I know that's a little bit of a tongue twister on both, both names, so we'll get into that breakdown um, right now. But first, I'd like to introduce, here's a list of our board members within our organization. So if you want to go ahead and take a screenshot, take a picture, or a view in the recording later, um, these are all of the points of contact if you want to reach out to us. Um, personally, or if not, you can check out our, um, our club email, which is going to be noted later on in the presentation. So first, let's give a quick breakdown on what SHIP is. So SHIP is the Society of Hispanic Professional Engineers, um, originally founded in Los Angeles, California in 1974 by a group of engineers employed by the city of LA. So what these engineers wanted to do was they wanted to create an organization to empower Hispanics and Latinos in STEM, um, to give them more opportunities to elevate them as um, high position leaders in the engineering and the STEM community. So they wanted to make a difference. And I believe it was four or five of them that got together um, and they decided to start this organization. Um, and their goal was to form a national organization to help out the Hispanic community. Um, and the key, the key concept for founding this organization, one of those key concepts was networking um, and just getting um, Hispanics, Latinos connected um, with professionals and industry and with those opportunities. And today, SHIP is a national organization and hugely successful. Um, and we're a part of that organization. I'm glad to be a part of that. So our goal um, with SHIP, again, is to empower Hispanics and Latinos in STEM. Um, that's the primary focus. Um, overall, we are a non-discriminatory organization. We welcome everyone to join from all backgrounds. So if you're not Hispanic or Latino, that does not stop you from joining our organization. Now let's give a breakdown of what CHESS is. So CHESS is the Society of Hispanic Engineering and Science Students. Um, that's our name at Cal State LA. It's more of a legacy name as we were one of the founding chapters um, when SHIP was in its very early days. So in 1975, the year after SHIP was initially founded, um, Cal State LA was one of the first founding student chapters. And this was before everything went national. So we ended up making our own name. Um, now that SHIP is a, lo a larger organization, um, they're trying to be more organized and unified all across with all chapters, student and professional. Um, there's been a rebranding initiative so that all organ all chapters can rename themselves as SHIP and followed by their school name or their city name for professional organizations. So for Cal State LA, we're rebranding. Instead of CHESS, we're moving towards SHIP Cal State LA, 
with the sh professional chapter in Los Angeles. They are recognized as SHIP Los Angeles for South Bay. There's SHIP South Bay LA and so forth. Um, again, we're all one huge organization um, seeking to empower students in STEM and bring those opportunities to everyone. So looking at the national map, we can see that SHIP is broken down into several regions um, based on a group of different states. This is just to give you some context. Um, okay, so um, here with Cal State LA, we're, we're part of region two as we're in um, Southern or Baja, California. And then we also have the Northern, the Southern tip of Nevada. We have Arizona and also Hawaii. Um, this just breaks down um, into which this, this just breaks down the, the chapters into little localized regions because now we're so huge. Um, it doesn't mean you can't interact with the other regions. And that's where you get to see the other students at national um, conventions, which we'll get into later. Um, but it's just to give you some context of how huge SHIP is and how we're sort of grouped um, based on um, our location in the US. So now we're going to SHIP's mission and vision. So for our mission with SHIP, we want to change lives by empowering the Hispanic community to realize its fullest potential to impact the world through STEM awareness, access, support, and development. And our vision is to create a world where Hispanics are highly valued and influential as the leading innovators, scientists, mathematicians, and engineers. Again, our efforts are not limited to Hispanic Latino um, individuals, but this is our primary focus and what we initially found were founded on. Um, ultimately, we want to give these opportunities and this empowerment um, and generate this influence from all of our students um, at Cal State LA and all, um, all students everywhere else and all professionals moving forward in the world of STEM. We want to create a more diverse um, STEM environment give the opportunities to everyone so all people have um, the opportunity to um, gain success, to share their influence in the community and to make an impact in the world. So for student chapters, we have five pillars that we focus on with the first being academic development, then we have chapter development slash networking, we have professional development, leadership development, and also community service and outreach. So first with academic development, what we do is we have different study workshops throughout the semester for um, general studying, for midterms, for finals. Um, when we were in person, we would provide food and snacks. Um, unfortunately, we can't do that now, but hopefully as we return to in-person school, um, we can start providing those again for our students, for our members. We just get together, we, we provide a room, a place to study because sometimes the library's book or it's hard to find a space. Um, and also it's nice to study with a group of people who are you know, going through the same struggles as you. Um, we understand that school is tough and that's why we try to get through it together. We also have FE study sessions. Um, if you don't know, FE is the Fundamentals of Engineering. Um, and that's a license you take, uh, more likely for civil engineers, but a mechanical electricals um, also might need those. Not sure about technology and computer science so much, but it's a useful license to help you further along in your career. So we provide um, study sessions to help you prepare for that exam. With chapter development and networking, we have fun activities that we do together as um, a chapter. We like to say that we are a familia, which means in Spanish, we are a family. Um, we like to interact that way with each other um, and also encourage that environment with those around us, with other organizations and students on campus in general, just to make everyone feel welcome and also take a break from all the hardcore engineering stuff and STEM focus that we have um, on a constant basis. We have to make a balance in life so you're not overwhelmed by all of the all the hard stuff. So we'd have fundraisers, we have outdoor activities, we collaborate with other um, ship chapters from different universities, professional chapters as well, just to take a break and have some fun. With professional development, uh, we, we participate in, we have 
we participate in different events throughout the year, either hosting or attending. So we host workshops called professional speaker series where we invite a professional guest speaker to present on a certain topic. And then afterwards we have a Q&A session um, for students to interact with the professionals. We also interview and resume prep workshops. Um, and then even further, we have uh, we attend different workshops at other universities where they give those preparation workshops on a full day basis. You also have regional and national conventions, which we attend. Um, and that's where you not only attend workshops, but you network with professionals more. Those are larger scale. You gain leadership development and you also attend exclusive career fairs where you get job opportunities uh, for internships, full-time jobs, research opportunities, graduate school opportunities. So again, we provide this exposure to all of our members to um, increase your success. We then have leadership development. If you want to gain some leadership skills, um, we have positions within our board. Um, we can show you how to be a leader if you don't know how, or if you've never been a leader, or if you figure you want to be a stronger leader, um, we can continue to help you with that. Um, in our events, within our chapter, we can help you grow in that aspect. Uh, and then lastly, we have um, community service and outreach where we give opportunities for volunteering and networking by giving back to the next generation of STEM, usually middle and high school. So you attend events, you help students with the workshops as a volunteer, and you also facilitate interaction between um, industry professionals and those middle and high school students. Um, just a quick check. Um, am I running a little over on time or? Yes. Are we... Okay. <laughs> All right. So I'll, I'll, I'll close it right there. I know it's short on time. Um, I'll just stop at right here. So take a picture. If you're interested in joining that bit.ly link is our membership interest form. There's a lot more I could go into detail on, but if there's a minute for questions, I'll leave that. If not, that's what I have for today. Uh, Aaron, so there is one question and you answered yes. it earlier, but maybe you can reiterate it. Uh, so Michael M is asking, do you have to be Hispanic to be in SHIP? Awesome question. And again, I'll reiterate as um, Sui mentioned earlier, and you'll also hear from Nesby moving forward that um, we do not discriminate against any member who wants to join. We are welcoming to everyone who wants to join. Primary focus is on the Hispanic Latino community. That does not mean um, being Hispanic or Latino is a requirement for you to join with us. All right, thank you very much, Aaron. And as I told the told the past presenters, um, if you wouldn't mind sticking around for another five minutes or so, um, maybe questions uh, can come up uh, from our students and they'll uh, put them in the Q&A for you to answer. You can go ahead and type your answer there. So Definitely. again, Aaron, thank you for joining us and sharing this information about SHIP. All right, as I stick, of course, as I stick around for the next 15 seconds or five minutes, just wanted to share this last slide is our upcoming meeting after spring break. Um, you can join and attend just to get more information about us. I'll leave that on so you can take a picture so that it's a part of the recording. Um, so you have now the membership interest form link from the previous slide and now the information for our email contact. Um, social media and for the, the upcoming meeting. We'll be sharing details shortly and we'll share them with Dr. Galvan so he can share them with you as well. Yeah, and Aaron, you can go ahead and drop them in the chat as well for people to, um, All right. to answer. And as you get off, um, there is a question that you can go ahead and answer, type in your answer response as we get the next speaker on. Uh, so thank you very much. And up next, we have the Association for Computing Engineering, and we have Grace Lynn and Alvin Liu, who will be uh, sharing with you all a little bit more about ACM. You all can go ahead and share your screen. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Galvan. Um, so Grace, I'll, yeah. I guess I'll introduce myself first. Um, my name is Alvin Liu, and I'm currently a project officer for the Association for Computing Machinery. And I'm Grace, and I'm currently the vice president of ACM. So, of course, as we just mentioned, we are the Association for Computing Machinery, also known as ACM. Um, and we like to say that it's not a bug, it's a feature. Uh, that's a slogan, but don't use it against uh, your professors in your classes. <laughs> 
So yeah, um, a little bit about who we are. We are the largest computer science club on campus and we exist to provide you with resources and tips and opportunities for you to get to know the industry as well as to help you in your academic career. Um, how do we do that? We provide pro uh, project workshops as well as professional workshops. So this includes the mentorship as well as some fun things that we'll go into later. Um, this club is open to everyone, not just computer science majors. And we basically just, you know, have fun learning and getting to know your community. So some of the projects this semester uh, include the Flappy Bird AI project that I've been running, as well as the advanced project, which is based on Flutter. And so a little bit uh, about both of the projects. Every single semester, we have two new projects uh, that are bi-weekly and hosted six times um, over the semester. And it's open to all ACM members, uh, and they're, they're really great for getting that experience, like firsthand experience on developing a project. So for the Python AI, um, we've worked with Python and Pygame to create the Flappy Bird game, as well as implement the machine learning library into it so that the game plays itself. And then the advanced project uh, is using Google's Flutter software development kit, uh, which allows you to develop cross-platform apps for both iOS and Android. So those are really cool projects. And if you join ACM, then you'll obviously get the opportunity to participate in them for next semester. And so some of the events that we've hosted other than the projects include our mentorship program, uh, which personally I've been part of, as well as um, Grace was part of it as well last semester. And so during the mentorship program, you get to learn a bunch of things, for example, like building your resume, your LinkedIn handshake profiles, um, you get invest uh, finance tips, um, you kind of get to learn about the CS industry and we kind of guide your uh, guide you along the path and kind of what it's like to you know seek internships and things like that for the future. So Grace, if you'd like to talk a bit more about the mentorship program. Yeah, sure. So my personal experience really is that I went in with almost nothing on my resume. Um, it was very unpolished, very unprofessional. And then I went in and they helped me like polish that and um, give me a lot of insight into the professional industry and also give me a chance to attend a professional conference where, where I talked to industry leaders and also got some opportunities to apply for internships. Of course. And so next, um, one of the recent events that we've actually held is a hackathon. No, we are not actually hacking. We're not on the FBI watch list. Um, but for the hackathon, for those of you who haven't heard about it, it's just an event where you kind of get project experience. Uh, you get to develop a you know, programming um, kind of project. For example, I think some people did uh, web pages, um, maybe mobile apps. And for ACM specifically, you do get to win prizes and bragging rights. Um, so you can look forward to that next year if you are interested in our club. And so next, some success stories uh, from our ACM leaders. Our leadership, um, if you'd like to join, we'll talk about that on the next slide, has helped a lot of us, including myself and Grace, um, to kind of get our get to know our way in the computer science field. So for example, uh, we've had Erica and Jorge uh, get internships at both Reddit and Intel, um, respectively. Yeah, and then we've had Christian who is our past president and he is currently working at American Express. And we have Calvin who had an internship recently at Northrop Grumman. And they were both part of the mentorship program that we mentioned earlier. And of course, you get to learn from all of the people um, at ACM. And if you do decide to join our leadership, um, we did have our elections last month in February, uh, but we're always open to having new ACM leaders. So if you're interested in just developing uh, leadership skills, if you're interested in you know, maybe taking them to the next level and going for a board member position uh, for the future, then definitely don't pass up the opportunity to join us and kind of just get to know, uh, get to gain some skills for your professional career. Yeah, so going on to some of our events, um, as we can see here, we have game nights that we just hosted, as well as many other events, such as guest speaker events, where you get to hear about a person's experience in the industry, and um, some other events that go into more professional development that are beyond um, what is covered in the mentorship program. So to elaborate on the ones here, the competitive game night is one that we recently implemented, and basically you get to win Amazon gift cards for just interacting um, and playing games with your fellow ACM members. And if you win, then, well, you win the gift card. Um, and then for the regular game night, it's really just a time for you um, to chill and hang out with people 
in the middle of the semester, maybe, you know, before midterms roll around or before finals roll around. And I think like last time we did it, some people stayed up to 1 a.m., which I mean, clearly we support mental health and um, sleep schedules, but you know, priorities. <laughs> So uh, what is the cost for joining ACM? Uh, the cost would be your sleep schedule. No, I'm kidding. Uh, we are actually one of the most affordable clubs on campus. So our membership is just $5.50. Uh, and if you're interested in signing up, uh, please check out our website at acm calcioacom slash membership. Uh, you can just go to acm calcioacom the main website, if you're interested in learning more about our projects and programs as well. Uh, there should be tabs about uh, all of what we do, and you should be able to learn more about the club. And so lastly, thank you all for your time. Uh, if you're interested in checking out our social media or our website um, or our Discord, where we've been hosting our social media events, I believe Grace will be putting them in the chat. So please uh, feel free to check those out. And thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you, Grace and Alvin. And uh, there's currently a question in the chat, not necessarily specific to ACM, but um, Emil is asking, um, what made you choose Cal State LA over any other universities you may have been admitted to? Any insights uh, are greatly appreciated. Alvin, want to take this one? Um, I guess my main reason for Cal State LA was uh, because I just live close by and I figured I do like the LA area and I like staying around, um, you know, where a lot of my family members are. So that's my personal reason for choosing Cal State LA. Yeah, um, for me, it was also location and also just the support system that the university had, especially with all of these clubs and all the opportunities that they offer. Awesome. All right, well, thank you again, uh, Grace and Alvin, uh, for uh, sharing that information about um, ACM. And as I've told past uh, presenters, if you wouldn't mind sticking around for another five minutes or so, um, any questions that might come up in the uh, Q&A that you can answer, that would be greatly appreciated. Up next, we have Niall Usuri uh, Brumfield, who will be presenting on the National Society of Black Engineers, uh, also known as NSBE. Niall, you can go ahead and share your screen. Um, when you're ready. Great. Hi, everyone. So my name is now Yusri Brumfield. I'm a junior major in civil engineering at California State University, Los Angeles. I'm the president of the Cal, um, Cal State LA Nesby chapter. We have our other board members here. Unfortunately, they couldn't make it today. There's Emmanuel Ikechi, the program's chair, Cameron Gian, the treasurer, me, Nicholas Martin, our academic excellence chair, and Abu Bakr, um, our vice president. So today I'll be talking about an uh, overview of NSBE. First, I'll go over what our NSBE mission statement is, and then I'll talk a little bit about the history of NSBE, and then I'll talk about the key principles that NSBE is about. After all, I'll go over some of our major events and then social activities that we've done within our chapter. And lastly, I'll be showing us some, showing some pictures. So the NSBE mission statement is to increase the number of culturally responsible black engineers who excel academically, succeed professionally, and positively impact the community. This is something that we say all the time um, at all of our conferences and normally we stand up for it. Um, but seeing as I'm the only one here, I'm, I can't see it. <laughs> um, Nesby was founded in 1974 at Purdue University by, I believe, seven members. Um, the first Nesby conference was in 1975, and it had 48 students from 32 different schools. Since then, Nesby has grown from six to um, 36,000 members. And our NSBE annual national conference increased from 48 to over 14,000 attendees. NSBE has more than 500 act chapters over, uh, across the world. Um, some of our neighboring chapters are Cal State Fullerton, Cal State Long Beach, and there are many others in Southern California as well. And the main goal of the society is, is it has a current 10-year plan to produce 10,000 black engineers annually by 2025. That means that every graduating class will be 10,000 black engineers. Here's a picture of the very first Nesby chapter. 
So what's NSBE about? NSBE, we focus a lot on academic excellence of our members. We provide a lot of workshops and activities geared toward this. Um, we have study sessions, um, tutoring sessions, and we also have a mentorship program. We also, um, through the NSBE website, provide many, many scholarships um, that they're all available on there. The registration fee to be a NSBE member is only $15. Um, we also pro provide leadership development. So if you're interested in a board position or a higher board position, like a regional board position, you just have to ask and pursue it. And um, there are elections for some higher board positions, but in, at Cal State LA, we are welcoming anyone who will want to be on the board and develop leadership schools, um, skills, and we distribute the work pretty well, so you wouldn't be overwhelmed. We also do community outreach events. A couple of weeks ago, we did this event with Mesa where we um, hosted like a engineering info session for this school called Maya Angela. We also work with our, with the Los Angeles Nesby Junior chapter. Nesby Junior is from, um, I think first grade to sixth grade and then it's the Nesby High School chapter and then it's collegiate. But we've done outreach events with them where we um, participate in their activities. We also have a lot of professional development. This takes place mainly at our conferences, but also we have workshops um, such as resume workshops, interview workshops, um, info, info sessions by certain companies. Um, and when you add all these things together, you get Nesby. This is a map of the National Society of Black Engineers regions. And since we're in California, we're in region six, it is the largest region geographically, but we have the least amount of schools. Now I'll talk about our major events. We have three conferences a year. First is the Regional Leadership Conference. That's with all of region six. Last year it was in San Francisco. It was very nice to attend and we had a lot of fun. There's a lot of um, internship opportunities there at the career fairs, and you get to connect with the other region, the other chapters in the region. And that's the Fall Regional Conference. Then we have the National Conference in the spring, which is all of the Nesby regions. Last year, well, not last year, because it was virtual. Well, this year is virtual, but last year, Last year's was virtual too, sorry. The year before that, it was in Detroit and it was a great experience getting to go. It, it was nice to see a lot of black people doing great things. And even the, peop the people in the city of Detroit were surprised to see so many black people um, dressed up and pursuing engineering. If you're a board member, we also have the regional leadership conference that takes place over the summer. Last year's regional leadership conference take took place in Sacramento. It was very fun and you learn a lot of valuable skills to lead your chapter. Within our chapter and other Nesby chapters as well, we have a lot of um, social activities. Um, before COVID, we would do a Taco Tuesday night with all of our chapter members and it was very successful. We would always have a great turnout and you would just get the time to connect with your other members and develop those bonds. It's always nice to be around people that are doing the same thing as you and pursuing the same goals as you. The friends you make now are probably going to be the friends that you have for the rest of your life, right? So it, it's, um, it's great to get out there and communicate and have fun with each other sometimes. We also, during COVID, we've had this buddy system. It's a system where we pair up two people and we have them communicate with each other um, just check in on each other, talk, whatever, help each other with homework, whatever they decide to do for two weeks, then they switch and they do it with somebody else and they have to meet at least once. And this way it um, provides a sense of, um, I forget the right word, but like togetherness. Yeah. Um, before COVID, a, a couple years ago, my freshman year, I'm a junior right now, there was a skate night with um, Cal State Long Beach, and I heard that that was very successful. 
And we've also had a bonfire with Cal State Long Beach and Cal State Fullerton. And that was also very successful, it was very fun. So here's some pictures. This top picture on the left is from our Nesby National Conference in 2019. This picture on the right was from our 2019 Fall Regional Conference. This is this picture is from our Taco Tuesday night. As you can see, it's a lot of fun. Everybody's smiling. <laughs> and then the picture on the right, it was from our bonfire beach trip with Cal State Long Beach and Cal State Fullerton. In this picture on the left, we this was when we went to um, our local Nesby Junior chapter and the specific project they were working on this time was they were building robotic hands and we will definitely be having more outreach events with them in the future. And, and the picture on the right is just one of our body meetings. I think this was a resume body meeting. And, and every time, I've been to a lot of these resume meetings, but every time I go, I learn something new. So I'm certain you'll learn something on each visit. Thank you for listening to our presentation. Um, I will drop the Nesby Instagram in the chat and I will also, um, I think we have a membership form. I'll drop that in the chat as well. But if not, you can email me at um, I'll drop my email in the chat. <laughs> That's it. Thank you. That's good. Thank you, Niall. And I do have a question that was asked uh, before and just curious to know your answer. Why did you choose Cal State LA from other institutions that you might have been accepted to? Well, I was thinking of going to Morgan State on the East Coast. It's a HBCU and it's in Baltimore and I'm a diehard Ravens fan. So, and I have family over there. So it was a really tough choice, but what really made me choose Cal State LA was one that is really cheap. You're paying a 11th of the tuition that you would pay to go to USC. And if you do your research, Cal State LA is one of the top engineering schools in the country. And, and for the fact that you're getting it for really, really cheap is amazing. And it was close to home. It, um, and it's also the number one school in upward mobility, meaning that they take people in lower income classes and, and they leave with a higher income job, if that makes sense. So that's why I chose Cal State LA. Awesome, thank you. And uh, as I've asked other uh, presenters, if you don't mind sticking around for another five minutes and answer any questions that might come up in the Q and A, that would be greatly appreciated. All right. Uh, so there you go. Another you heard just heard Niall share another professional organization that you can join uh, within our College of ECST and develop your network and community, as he shared. Up next, we have Formula SAE, and presenting for Formula SAE is Christian Garcia, Leonardo Sanchez, and Nahom Saifu. So I'm not sure who of the three of you is sharing your screen, but uh, when you're ready, you can go ahead and share your screen. Thank you, Dr. Gavon. I'll be sharing my screen. Okay. Okay. Good morning, everyone. I'm the home Seifu. Good morning. I'm Leo Sanchez. I'm the other presenter. Good morning. My name is Christian Garcia. I'm the current captain of the team. And congratulations on choosing Cal State LA. Uh, we are Formula SAE. SAE stands for Society of Automotive Engineers. Our team name is Golden Eagle Motorsports. And we're a university competition project team. We design, build, and race an open-wheeled, formula, more indie-styled internal combustion engine vehicle. Oh, no, do you have the presentation open? I don't see it on my screen. I don't know if yeah, anybody. Don't Which screen is showing? Uh, the motorcycle. Yeah. Oh. Let's start that from the top. <laughs> you know, my screen, I have three screens, but for some reason, they're not numbered one, two, three. Thank you for correcting me on that. No, you're okay. Yeah, let me. Let's quickly go through this one, right? Well, congratulations, really, for choosing Cal State LA. I mean, for me, I have no regrets being here, and it's probably one of the best decisions that I've ever made in my life. Um, we're a university competition project team. We design, build, and race an open-wheeled 
more indie styled internal combustion engine vehicle. And with me, I have Leonardo Sanchez and Christian Garcia to present and talk about how Formula SAE is so awesome. So as the home previously mentioned, we are a competition team here at school. Or, but that pretty much means that we go to compete against other other universities across the state and across the country, right? We are we do design and manufacture an open solid vehicles similar to what you see on the picture. Let's go to the next slide. And since we are an engineering team, we do focus mainly on the engineering aspects. We don't really consider ourselves a racing team. So if you're thinking of joining to just drive around, probably not the best best option for you. Go to the next one. So we focus on the design aspect initially, right? We design mostly everything, if not everything from scratch, right? We go into the design phase. We have different subsystem setups where, where each member is pretty much leading a, a design team. Right, so we design, for example, the chassis, the pedal and brake assembly, the suspension components, and stuff like that. Go to the next slide. So after we have designed many of our components, we go into the analysis phase, where we pretty much try to analyze our, our parts and see if they was withhold the forces that they were meant to withhold. Right, and obviously sometimes our designs don't come out great the first time around. So this is technically our refining phase too. We try to refine our, our parts and try to make them better, try to, with, try to make them withstand the forces that they were meant to withstand. And once the parts, once we were okay with how the parts came out, you go to the next mm -hmm. slide. We go into the manufacturing phase and this is where we pretty much manufacture the vehicle itself in our lab. We, we manufacture everything from from scratch, right? We buy, the, we buy the raw material and we just build it, right? For example, there's a picture of one of our members welding there since we weld the frame in house. This is a picture of an upright that has been CNC'd. We have a CNC machine in our in our maker space. Here's our next one. So after we have manufactured the car, right, and gone through the whole design phase, we go into testing. And in testing, what we pretty much do is try to drive the car as hard as possible, right? So if anything breaks, we could fix it before we go to competition. And this is where we also test different suspension setups and see what works better for, for different scenarios, right? So there's a, there's a video of one of our members, actually our, our test driver, who is also an engineer, right? Testing the car down in the parking lot out of school. I wish it was sound. It, it sounds way better with sound. But yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much it for the testing. The track layout we try to mimic what is really close to what we will find in competition. That way, the driver is able to practice their their driving skills as well. And when we go to competition, we, uh, again, as I previously mentioned, we compete against other schools from across the country. And we have to go through different, uh, different phases, pretty much different, yeah, different phases to, to make sure that our, that our vehicle is safe to drive. Uh, there's a video to the top where they pretty much incline the vehicle to a 45 degree angle to make sure that there's no uh, spillage and fluids so it could be safe to go on track, right? Uh, this competition was pre before COVID. This was my sophomore year, I believe. And this competition went to Nebraska. You go to the next one. All right, thank you for that, Leo. Uh, now I'm gonna go into static and, and dynamic events or competition events particularly. So for static, you would think that things aren't moving, they're at rest. The car is at rest because we're going to be doing the business uh, presentation, design report and presentation, and our cost and manufacturing competition. Think of these as opportunities where 
post-graduation, perhaps you're going to be a representative engineer for Ford Motors or a Toyota, and you're going to talk about why your car is so awesome, how it's doing business and comparing with shares. Uh, they'll usually give you a prompt. In this case, it's a real case scenario where we've been in business for 20 years and we're about to come up with the swaggiest uh, formula car in existence that's going to smoke the competition. And of course, how we do with cost and manufacturing our design because it's the whole part of the business. It's pretty holistic. And then dynamic, the car is moving. Fnet is non zero. Uh, we have the skid pad to test for cornering for suspension. It's in the top right here. We have the acceleration and brake system uh, test. Excuse me, for uh, acceleration, we have, we're testing the engine and brake system. For autocross, we have the maneuverability and handling as a focus. And then for the endurance, which is the track right here, uh, to the left, you have a 22 kilometer uh, trial where they weigh you before and after to see how much fuel that you use. They want to see how efficient your engine is. Now we're going to go uh, briefly into the subsections and structure of our team. As you can see, that's all of us right here. So here's the breakdown and structure that we had from the 2020 to 2021 season. Uh, we have the crash, the captain, which is Christian, co-captain Leo. And then you have the suspension split into front and rear. The front, you split that because, well, the front is also going to have the steering, right? And the rear is going to have its own type of loadings. Think of when you go over a bump on the street. So you have David leading the front and Patrick leading the rear. We have ergonomics and aerodynamics. Uh, that's currently one section at the moment, being led by Tyler. Driver control, so think about brakes, anything that's like used with the interface for the driver controls the car. That's led by Abel. You have the frame. It was also led, led by Leo. Electrical systems with Eric. And then the engine is split into powertrain and drivetrain with Francisco and Henry. And we're also trying to get our business team up and going. Uh, this is really a crucial part of the team as well because not only we're an engineering team, but if you will, we're also, the goal is also like a company, right? You see with the static uh, presentations, I mean, this stuff is very important, right? Fundraisers, flyers, sponsorships, social media, our online swag store, graphic designs, promo videos. You know, these are things that give us, make us more popular. And especially the sponsorships, we can make our car even nicer with having more capital to get nicer parts. And you don't, uh, I mean, anyone is open to join any, any, any which of the teams. So you don't have to be an engineering major to join FSAE. But of course, it's like an engineering project, right? And a business team would be great if you're not an engineering, ma not an engineering major. So a general timeline. So up here on the right, you will find this familiar. You will find this picture familiar in the future because it's actually from ME 2030. It's talking about the general engineering design process. As you can see, you can go around and around. Uh, we're pretty much towards the end of our season, so we're pretty much just polishing uh, or learning from our lessons at this point. We're submitting stuff for competition and seeing how we can improve things for the future season. As soon as we can enter the lab, uh, we're going to ref reflect on what we have. Aside from there, what it's a uh, how to finish up with the current car. And our goals for this competition uh, was to place top 30. Uh, we want to build a lasting foundation, which we've been doing. We have a SharePoint. We have pretty much uh, everything that's a record of how we do things. We're putting that up so future people can see and learn from it. And also, part of Formula SAE, you put in what you get out. So those leadership skills, because you have to present your own design, and you're going to have it challenge. That's the engineering design process, which you get practice with. Manufacturing experience when you go back to campus, which should be soon, we hope. And working at professionals before, during, and after competition. And of course, all majors and years are welcome. And we have our team email here if you want to contact us. And I know a lot of people use Instagram, so if you want to follow us, that's our Instagram. Are there any questions? I saw there were two in the chat. Yeah, so we have time for one question, uh, just because we have the next presentation. So the uh, one question is, uh, why did you decide to go with an IC engine instead of electric? I was briefly part of Formula SAE before the pandemic with PCC and Caltech, and they had an electric motor. I this could, is from Emil. I could answer that. 
So one of the uh, biggest differences between both of our, because uh, we compete in the same ground. So the electric and the, and the IC, uh, internal combustion. So that's like, um, I guess you could call them like non-electric motors. Uh, we compete in the same grounds. Uh, so they go through more stringent uh, um, regulations. So since they have like basically a battery in their car, which uh, has high voltage, you know, probably high current and uh, it takes uh, a little bit, it, it takes more more regulation to, to go through. So that's why we, we uh, only focus on having a, an IC uh, car for the meantime, at least for now. I mean, I think if, if our team becomes big enough or if somebody starts uh, the electric team, then we would probably consider having both teams because there are some schools that have both electric and IC. Like, um, I think uh, UC Irvine has uh, has all three. They have an IC and uh, um, electric and uh, Baja team uh, in their in their uh, facilities. So we choose IC because, uh, well, I, I personally chose IC because I could hear it. <laughs> You know, because uh, um, when we went to competition a, a couple of years back when, when Leo mentioned, we went and we thought we missed the competition, but we went out to the track and we just kind of heard, you know, it's not like RC cars. And um, I was like, oh, it's done. So we went out and it was like a lot of electric cars just like rolling around. And I was like, oh, you know, but it is interesting. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> yeah, those electric cars have a lot of power. Like it's 100 percent, you know, it's just goes straight to the electric motor. So it's just phew. All right. Well, thank you very much and uh, for this presentation. And as I've asked the past presenters, if you don't mind sticking around for another five minutes or so, uh, there is another question for uh, all of you in Formula SAE that you can uh, type your answer um, in the Q&A. Um, and if students, any questions you might have, feel free to ask. Um, and I'm sure the officers wouldn't mind answering. So again, thank you, Formula SAE, for this presentation. Up next, we have uh, Richard Chavez and Abel Guillen who will be presenting on the American Society of Mechanical Engineers. Uh, Richard and Abel, I'm not sure who will be sharing their screen, but you can go ahead and share your screen. Now, home, can you stop sharing your screen, please? My apologies about that. No, it's okay. Hey there, future engineers. Uh, I'll be sharing my screen, and sadly, Richard is not here. He has to go do some important uh, business. Let me go and do a quick go in. Yes, share my screen. Let me go share, yeah, just everything just in case. And then let me go and present. Boom. Okay, so we are known as ASME. Now, let the name fool you. We are not just mechanical engineers, we're every aspect of engineering, specifically electrical and also uh, computer science as well. Or I guess software engineering, you want to call it like that. And we also accept any major um, that's interested in building robots. And yeah, let's go into it. So yeah, background. Yeah, we're basically just an old organization. We've been around for quite a while. The whole organization itself has like about like 100,000 members. And overall, we try to focus on some very heavy engineering topics, especially like robotics. And right there in the bottom right, that's basically where, oh wait, <laughs> I always forget there's something like that. Oh yeah, um, oops. Uh, yeah, right there in the bottom right, that's basically where uh, the majority of our team is at. Some of us ha have left. That was like uh, about like a year before yeah, the pandemic. And yeah, some of our members have left, but uh, the majority of us are still around, sticking, and we're still trying to build as many robots as we can. And yeah, overall, uh, the American Society of Mechanical Engineers in Cal State LA are trying to focus on trying to build some uh, awesome robots, specifically autonomous robots, which is just a fancy word for like robots that can move on their, on their own. So yeah, for the actual design competition there's two competitions that our club does it's the 28th and yeah or i guess quote unquote the 28th annual intelligence ground vehicle competition also known as igvc and also another competition called the university rover competition the university rover competition mostly uh it's used for uh senior design but we still help them out in some rare cases but uh yeah but we mostly focus on igvc it's a little bit more easier in our task it's still a bit a bit of a challenge basically the whole thing is basically building like an actual autonomous robot to go through like an actual track try to grab like a ball or something and go over some obstacles and then overall just like just try to 
do some hardcore stuff. And it's pretty, uh, it's a pretty big competition in, uh, yeah, in the act, actual country. Uh, several universities do participate, such as, yeah, Oakland University, and even like Stanford, Caltech, and some other pretty uh, interesting universities. We're like, we're like up. Uh, yeah. Give me one second. And yeah, so for the app teams, it's the mechanical team, the electrical team, and computer science. And basically, all these three teams are basically contributing each other to uh, help out and build the robot. You know, we need the mechanical team to overall just build the structure of it, the electrical team for the actual electronics, computer science for the actual coding of the autonomous robot. So yeah, it's pretty groovy. We definitely can find some room for all of you there. But yeah, going more specifically with mechanical team object, yeah, objective, we use uh, applications like SOLIDWORKS, which is basically a, a CAD design software where you guys can make some cool, um, yeah, um, sort of like parts of the actual robot or some other material that's going to help us out. And we're going to teach you guys. And if you guys are part of the mechanical team, you guys are definitely going to learn uh, how this all how this all going to work. And also we also use the FBA and FCD which is basically just a fancy word for like the simulations within the program. So we basically know the stress analysis and also some uh, other strains that the actual part might be facing. And that's very important when trying to build a robot that's going to go through like a huge terrain that's like the size of a campus. It, we kind of need to know where it's going to have a breaking point so we can try to resolve that before the actual competition. And then we'll also do the manufacturing. Now, COVID times have been a little bit stressful. It's manufacturing has been a little bit interesting, but before the actual pandemic, we used to do this by hand. We used to whale things uh, every day uh, during uh, yeah during uh, the ECSD campus, and oh my god, we just had a fun time doing it. It was definitely just one of the great things about the mechanical team. We do a lot of mills, lace, and they're like the basics, uh, fundamentals of engineering, or I guess manufacturing in that regard. And right now we're kind of multitasking. We're mostly ordering parts to uh I guess uh, I guess basically build the whole robot, but we're still planning to do, we're still planning to uh, teach our members how to manufacture, wield, meal, and lathe. It's a little bit difficult right now because everything's in Zoom, but we're trying to, like every other club, we're just trying to like manage the whole thing. But I do have hope that next semester we might come back, maybe, yeah, yeah. but you know, we'll see. <laughs> and also we actually created a CAD model of our robot. Um, now, Actually, this is a little bit misleading. This is not necessarily a current CAD model. Uh, we do have some more updated versions, but this is definitely the one that we start off with the year. And it was pretty, it's a pretty interesting design. Um, overall, this basically starts up the whole base. It's a little bit more taller in real life, but basically we made this, we made this whole thing in the, ad, in the actual software application, SOLIDWORKS. And our members just put our, just put their whole, sweat and blood into this it's just amazing and then we actually build it a physical part of it um and yeah we we it, it works it actually does move um we actually just put down a simple uh motor controller and just to see if it actually moves and stuff and it works it perfectly works it's pretty fast too but um we had to go update it and actually add some more uh, camera sensors and some more um um, yeah, and some more other components in order to actually make it move by itself. Uh, we had to go modify over time, but definitely just like the overall comparison, if we make something in SOLIDWORKS, we're just basically planning it out. And then bing, bing, bang, boom, we're going to go actually build it. And that's basically the, the amazing thing about the mechanical team. And let's see, the electrical team. So uh, basically, that's actually my team. And I got to say, it's pretty electric. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah. Um, and, and by the way, I'm actually a mechanic engineering major so again it doesn't matter what major you are uh we mostly prefer stem but again again any major can join our team um it's perfectly fine um but yeah basically we program microcontrollers arduinos raspberry pies uh tinsies even those uh yeah those, yeah we mostly focus on arduinos and raspberry pies but yeah uh it basically builds up the whole robot itself just try to make sure that all the all electronic inputs are perfectly fine-tuned. Uh, for example, like sense, like sensors. We kind of need sensors in order to actually detect if there's like an object um, ahead of the robot or behind it or something. And we also do development of the power distribution systems, which is actually where all the power is being distributed to each part of the actual robot, like each component, like the camera, uh, the wheels, 
all that groovy. And so we do single processing programming, GPS, computer vision, all that groovy stuff. That one's a little bit of a collaboration with us and the uh and and the computer science team we mostly try to just help them out with the actual components and then they just do the whole coding in that side but we do also do some coding mostly with arduinos and arduinos if you guys don't know what those are those are like cool little uh like little yeah microcontrollers that basically can just like make you do a bunch of cool little projects and all that stuff we basically try to do them uh we mostly mostly teaching our members how to like oh yeah that works and all that stuff and then for sorry about the background uh for number four yeah we're also designing the, the, uh, the science of custom circuit boards if required we have done that before we were doing that with a remote controller that we personally made uh just to actually just control the robot manually without the actual ai involved and it's overall pretty cool and then let's go into the actual software team and this one, you know, definitely a CS heavy, but we definitely teach our members how to code and all that great stuff. So basically gathering data from the sensors. Uh, we develop uh, some of the control systems, program the microcontrollers and motherboard. Uh, we also do a state machine, which is basically just a fancy word for like what the robot should do. Bing and bang, boom. Like if the robot ha sees an obstacle, blah, 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 they got to make a turn, blah, 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 blah. And then they also have something something cool like a robot operating system, which is also known as ROS, which is basically like how the robots are sort of like identify things. Like like one of our members basically uh, coded our robot to identify a highlighter. So it's pretty cool in that regard. And uh, overall, the software team is like it's amazing. It's just overall a fun time. Uh, if you guys want to know a little bit more about coding. And then, yeah. Oh, yeah. And also, yeah, just the actual um, how it all works. It's, it's pretty complicated, but if you're like a major in this, uh, yeah, in the pre <laughs> in this event, uh, you might understand it, but yeah, basically just do stay between two lanes, avoid hitting barrels, uh, climb a ramp, and then use GPS to navigate without lanes. So, yeah, that's pretty much what the CS team mostly does. And yeah, let me go to actually tell you the benefits of joining ASME. So, we do hands on experience, uh, we learn from workshops. We do internships, we do offer them. Um, and also we do research and leadership opportunities. You know, uh, with e team, we also have a sub team. So for example, for the electrical team that I'm in, we have a sub team where we just focus on the actual building of a remote controller or another sub team building on power distribution. So you can actually be a little leader in these teams and then bing, bing, boom, report what you're doing with your team and how you guys gonna achieve that uh, to actually build the whole robot or the aspect that like, uh, and yeah. Yeah. And then this is our contact information. And yeah, uh, just a uh, cast LA, LA, yeah, LA, ASME, IG at gmail.com. And our Instagram, cast LA, um, yeah, dash ASME. And then, yeah, anyone can join our ASME family. Uh, yeah, again, if you guys like robots, if you guys want to build something cool, you know, not little Hot Wheels, uh, definitely join us. And yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm done with my presentation. Um, and yeah, any questions? Nope, nope. Okay. Um, yeah, I see, yeah, I don't see any questions <laughs> at this time. Thank you, Abel, for sharing that information about the American Society of Mechanical Engineers. Greatly appreciate it. Um, if you wouldn't mind, yeah, stop sharing your screen. Um, and then I'll put a quick uh, last slide up. Um, give me a second. So yeah, so uh, this brings us to uh, the wrap up of our um, presentation, our time for today. Um, we wanna thank you all for joining us and learning more about the different clubs and organizations that ECC has to offer. Um, I am gonna drop in the chat um, the link to our college's ECST Preview Days web website where you can see the recordings from um, Wednesday and Friday, and then this will also be uploaded next week. Um, and Ralph, at this time, can you please drop the link to the clubs and organizations? So unfortunately, due to scheduling and it being spring break as well, we weren't able to host all of our student clubs and organizations um, this morning. So this morning you heard from about eight of the different student clubs and organizations. We have a lot more student clubs and organizations that you can join um, within the College of Engineering, Computer Science and Technology. And just in a, in a minute, uh, Ralph will uh, put the, the webpage um, for our ECST student clubs and orgs 
So there you have it in the chat. You can click on that link um, for clubs and organizations, and you can learn a lot more uh, details about the various student clubs and organizations that you can join once you decide to join us in the College of Engineering, Computer Science, and Technology. Again, thank you very much for spending Saturday morning with us, and we congratulate you on being accepted to Cal State LA's College of Engineering, Computer Science, and Technology, and we look forward to welcoming you this fall as new members to our College of Engineering, Computer Science, and Technology family. Take care and enjoy the rest of your weekend. Bye.